we're going to talk about money management. We're going to talk about people putting their money in the right channels. You can't save your way to wealth unless you have, you know, you, you've got a million dollar salary and you save half per year, which is 500,000. You know, you do that for 10 years, that's 5 million. You're wealthy. But, you know, let's go ahead and kind of look at that salary. Let's go ahead and um, go here. Let's see. Because the thing is, one of the things, one of the big problems I have with the fire movement is you've got people who are doing pathologically cheap things all right so let's go ahead and see what you make a million dollars a year you make more money than 99 point something percent of americans you you can't save your way to wealth unless you have an extremely high income um, one of the things that I thought was really good was this comment because, uh, there was, this is one of these extremely frugal people who are doing stuff. Now they've actually taken a little step further, but I like this comment. There's often a weird cycle that happens. Driftiness often helps people get out of debt and paycheck to paycheck living. But more or less, it's limited to that. To break free to the next stage, real wealth production, it requires a total shift in thought. You cannot cut expenses to wealth. Ultimately, to build wealth, you have to get on the other side of the equation. And once you realize that, you realize that time, opportunity, cost of being cheap actually hurts your wealth production. How many times have I said that? How many times have I put that out there? That being cheap actually hurts your wealth production. See, this is where being cheap creates a problem. It becomes a habit. Habit is strong. It's one of the strongest things a human being can have. Your habits lead you to where you are. Your habits create the, the life that you have, your habits. So you, you just can't save your way to wealth unless you have an extraordinarily high income. And if you have an extraordinarily high income, you just don't have the problems that the average person has. Because you're making a million dollars a year. You make many bad financial mistakes, but because you're making so much money, that it, it doesn't create a problem. I'll give you an example. And th this is what I call wealth mindsets. You don't spend money to be cheap. You're not cheap. You look at, okay, I got $50,000. What am I going to do with this money? How can I put this money to use that it benefits me later down the road. I can save it. I can invest it. I can buy a rental property. I can invest in a business. This is the shift in mindset. This is what I call the producer mindset. Many people who are pathologically cheap are consumers. They merely consume. <clears throat> and what they've done is change their consumption habits. That's the big change that they've made. We're not going <clears> to <throat> we're not going to consume as much stuff as we usually do. We're going to cut our consumption. We're going to cut it to the bone. And this is going to produce excess cash which if they just sit on, they're not going to get wealthy. 
You got to develop a wealth mindset. You got to become a producer. This is the other side of the equation. Once you start, because, you know, our gross domestic product is our wealth is based on what we produce, not what we have. So for you to go ahead and create more wealth, you have to get on the producer quadrant. Because this is one of the things that happens here on YouTube. You have a lot of people who become a little itchy. They become a little uh, salty. Hey, man, why are you selling those courses, man? Why don't you get a real job? This is a person who does not have the producer mindset. This is a person who is steeped in, I'm going to go work somewhere for a producer. Because if you have a job, the person who created that job is a producer. And what you really think about that, because, you know, it doesn't happen as much as it used to happen. I, I'll get it every now and then, but I first started here on YouTube. That was a common comment. Hey, man, stop producing. Stop creating online courses. Stop creating ebooks. Stop creating audiobooks. Be like me. Get a job. Misery loves company. This is one of the things that happens. Because when you make that mental shift, because the thing is, typically, people who have online businesses front load a lot of expenses. They're going to spend a lot of money for training, for courses. You can't be a pathologically cheap person and then escalate and ex escape your, your circumstances. Because uh, typically, uh, during some threads, I hear stuff like, I have a seven-year-old car, I have an eight-year-old car, it's just fine. That's good. I recommend that if you have low income that you get the car that you can pay cash for. I recommend, I was like, you don't make enough money to afford a car payment. And once again, on the other side of the equation, if you make it six figures, why do you have a car payment? You make it six figures, you shouldn't have a car payment. You should be allocating and budgeting your money correctly. You shouldn't have a car payment if you're making six figures, unless you have a business and you're leasing that car in the company business as a tax write off. That's the only way you should have a car payment. And this is the pathologically cheap issue. There is no strategy. I'm just going to save money. I'm going to live cheaply. Once again, if you're a parent, you have children, and you're living in the hood, your kids are going to inherit that way of thinking. And they grow up to live in the hood because, you know, living in the hood is cheap. That is the danger of the pathologically cheap mindset. That is the danger of thinking small ball. Because let's say, you know, the pathologically cheap. Let's talk about real estate. Uh, this is one of the things that creates a lot of controversy in the real estate world. You can buy. $50,000 house, which because of where it is, is not going to appreciate that much. And you can get income because, you know, once to think the, the way real estate works is based on your risk tolerance and exposure. Because I know someone who buys $500,000 houses up to 1.5 million. He renovates them. And he sells them. So I already have a blueprint on how it works. Now, the thing is, here's the rest of the story. This person has an extraordinarily high income. He makes two to three million dollars a year. So he can do all of this stuff through organic funding. Let's go back to the pathologically cheap. 
I want you to understand because um, wholesalers are doing business, are doing a phenomenal business because very few people have cash. Once you mentally situate yourself that I'm going to move the average price of my property to 150 to 250, the game changes. You can get higher rents. One of the things I've noticed around here, and, and as I study the real estate, and this is the expansion of the mindset, you're not going to create wealth by merely saving money. There must be an expansion of the mindset. I live in a house in the neighborhood where I see houses renting for four, five, in a few cases, $10,000, dollars $25,000 a month. Clearly, these houses may sit longer, but when they rent, they may get money. Oh, let's see what we got going on here. What do we have going on here? Jay Preston, Byron, Chris Monroe, Andre Robinson, Roadmaster. That London video is tight. Promotes more than the save. Absolutely. And that's where I'm going, LVMCD, the abundant mindset. Uh, Ebony White, that would be 30 days to 2,500. Jackie Gardner, how? How what? Brian Hendricks, is it okay to start off as a job to gain experience, learn the skill, and move into doing your own thing? Absolutely. That's what I did. I did not jump off into entrepreneurship with no experience no parachute with no reserves. I jumped off into entrepreneurship under the protection of jobs. There you go, Jay Preston. Brian, keep working in your job until your job costs you money. Jackie Garden. How, get started doing what? Vaughn B, why is your streams always smaller than you talk well? Once again, very few people are serious about changing their financial footprint. They're, I, I'm like, I have noticed the story time videos are getting way more views. Way more views than Vaughn um, B. A lot of people don't want to do the work. They don't want to hear me talk. They want to be entertained. They want to have fun. They don't want to do the hard work of building wealth. They don't even want to, they don't want to listen. Like I've noticed this trend that started uh the earlier this year. Abel, coming from the hood, your family can keep you in that mindset. Absolutely. This is why if you're a parent, it's very important for you to move where your kids will be exposed to different things. Rons, based on your story, I moved into an apartment in a wealthy neighborhood. Just being in the environment has changed me. All right, Ebony. It's a, I, hey man, once again, whenever I'm talking about these topics, I just don't, well, part of it's YouTube. Part of it's YouTube. I see luxury vehicles and massive homes every day. Jackie Gardner, the real estate business is not that easy. It takes money. Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, we, we, my man runs. I lived in the okay neighborhood before I moved over here. But my first thing when I was looking for a place to live, because my partner had died and I was between my place and her place. 
And, you know, after she died, I just didn't want to be in her house. And then my house, I was kind of sick of it. So I had this huge garage sale where I sold everything. And I started looking for an apartment because part of the, you know, when you watch someone die of cancer and all of the responsibility, because I took on some of the responsibilities, I just didn't want to be responsible for the upkeep and the maintenance of a house. A house, if you own it and live in it, is not an asset. It's a liability. And I wanted someone else to handle that stuff. So I got myself a luxury two-bedroom apartment. And, man, when I moved into that apartment, there was a guy in that apartment complex with a Ferrari. There was another guy with 911 Porsche. Uh, there was a medical residence. I mean, I just saw wealth everywhere through the neighborhood, big houses. And, you know, your environment, what you see, because, I mean, imagine you're trying to start a business and you live in the hood and you walk outside your house and all you see is trash on the street. You see uh, crackheads. That may not, that's not going to inspire you like, you know, when I, you know, when I go any direction I go to get purpose or something. I am passing mansions and it's become my norm. I was having a conversation with my girl and she's like, you know, I was watching these videos on YouTube about bikini bow fishing. And I was just like, why does this video have 1.2 views? And my girl said something that was uh, really interesting. She said, that's most of America. That's most of America. So Vaughn, be your um, observation. The streams are much smaller because most of America does not want to get wealthy. Most of America wants to be a little bit more comfortable and a little bit happier. Also, going back to the pathological frugality of, you know, people don't have cable. They don't have Verizon or T-Mobile. They got straight talk. I have seen people who have lived pathologically cheap. And none of these people that I know have lived like this have become wealthy. I have seen people spend every dime that they had. I've seen them become wealthy. See, the producer mindset is rooted in abundance. You must feel, see, appreciate, and have abundance mentally before it manifests into your life. Because when you have this pathologically cheap mindset, there is no way that you can have an abundant mindset. Von B. Real Spill. I put my daughter in a different school because I want her to have exposure to wealthy families, children. It's just a different world, man. It's just a very different world. Bull, no effort, no results. Christian Amerson, Uncle G, I think if your story times is opiate for the masses, Sometimes you have to give people what they want in order to educate them. Unfortunate, but true. I'm beginning to feel that, Christian. I am beginning to see that because uh, people love the story times. There are people who have subscribed to this channel who haven't watched videos. They, they've watched those videos because, you know, when you go into your YouTube dashboard, it's like this video is taken off because it has unusual subscriber act interest. So it was very interesting. LV, MCD, being around wealth also opened opportunities for you as well. What's up, King? Junior Kelly, for me, it started with the belief that I could change the trajectory of my mindset, which has led to, led to a major change in finances. Mark Scott, we become what we think about. Absolutely. They say Coward Leonard Raptor still driving over car. Part of that, when you have an athlete who makes millions of dollars for playing the game, they get a lot of hate. I think a lot of this behavior of I drive a regular car when I got millions to the bank is somewhat of a poverty mindset because they don't want to offend their fan base.
runs your channel is Edu Education Entertainment. Roadmaster, guilty. I love great stories. There, there will be more. I was working in a company that would blow thousands of dollars, so I knew I had to put my dog around it to see what's normal when you have money coming in that you know what to do with. That is a key component. Putting, you're exposing your children to different paths of wealth. Walter White, I like this. Media thinking can only bring you media of the results. You know, with these athletes who make millions of dollars, you know, for, I would say, for someone who plays in the NFL or the NBA, that's probably a wise move because you don't know how long you're going to be there. But it, it kind of gets a little ridiculous when you got $10, 15000000 million in the bank and you're driving a Honda because – you care what people think about you. You you like, you know, if you if Honda's your flow, that's your flow. But once again, let me uh go ahead and roll something. I have lived in a neighborhood that has had great wealth for about 10 years. And I have, like, you know, when, when I did the video, when I did, um, this video, all right, this, this is me coming out of my yard. I have a long driveway. Everyone has a long driveway. Everybody's on the acre to almost two acres on this street. And, you know, living in this neighborhood and seeing how people who are well to do, uh, there are million dollar homes on the street. I saw that these people did not live like the millionaire next door. You know, in the morning, when I'm when I'm rolling out, I see luxury cars all around. I see copious displays of wealth. I mean, there are people with statues in their yards. There are, um, you know, it's funny. I almost didn't make this video. That was funny. And I got so much hate on this video. Because they're like rich people are all over Atlanta. Rich people are here, and they're this by statistically. This is the wealthiest zip code in the southeast, except for five zip codes in Florida. And they both of these houses have pools because I took the drone up and I went over them. And this is old Atlanta money. This is an older neighborhood. This is older than West Paces Ferry. And I, I just did not see well-to-do people living in cracker boxes. I did not see, I mean, I've been here and I've been seeing folks, you know, I've been seeing the Lambos. I've been seeing the Porsches. I've been seeing the high-end Mercedes. I've been, I just, because essentially these people who live here who work over in Perimeter Center, they got five to seven minute drive to get to work. This is one of the things I've noticed about a lot of bosses. They live close to where they work. Jeff Bezos, he was, you know, his headquarters. He was thinking about they're near his homes. You know, you, you got all this. Why are you going to spend two, three hours in traffic when you don't have to? And this is one of the big things that I saw was that people would choose to live close to where they produces their money. And I got so much hate on this video. People were like, you know, they're, they're, you know, show some stuff about Southwest DeKalb. I'm like, I don't live in Southwest DeKalb. 
I'm in my neighborhood. And th th this is another thing that you have, you see with people who will talk about, um, there is this, this conversation that is going on on Facebook talking about is retail dead and retail are dying. And we have people comparing Walmart to small mom and pop businesses. You cannot compare a decade trillion dollar company against an up and coming small, small mom and pop. And this is what they were doing. And I got to the point where I, I, I issued the challenge. Let me see. Where's my challenge? And uh, cause this is one of the things I do to cut through the cl clutter. And this is one of the things I put up here. Because I see the game for what it is. You know, um, when people were talking about starting resale businesses, I was like, hey, don't start one. For all you people who say retail's not dead or dying, how much money are you personally putting into a physical store? There's what you believe and there's what you believe in. Where you put your money tells the truth about your real belief. It's easy to get into a philosophical argument online using decade-old first movers against up-and-coming new businesses to support your weak argument. How much money have you put into a physical location in the last year and this year? How many thousands? Pony up. Nobody's answering that question because they're all just talking out their butt. You know, it's one thing to get into a philosophical argument, and this happens online all the time where people will defend their position. But when you start getting into the meat, what are you doing? How are you performing? Uh, people go radio silent. Brian Hendricks, I'm actually getting a job with a window cleaning window tent business and they service homes and wealthy areas here in Los Angeles. And that's the reason I'm working with them to expose myself to the wealth. You will see all kinds of stuff. What's up, Cruz? Oh man, y'all talking basketball. Amir Black, it's better to clear credit card debt before I start a business? Absolutely. Grooves developed. How not watch the videos for a while? The story that stuck in my mind was the used panties. Douglas Jones, life span, lifespan average of the NFL players only three to five years. Jackie Gardner, this is where you have to get uh, develop a relationship with a hard money lender. Irvin, my girlfriend stayed on South Beach. Cool. GL, that reduces stress. Christian Emerson? No, man. I, I, I got a lot of hate. I had to delete a lot of comments. You would think seeing that video, they, I got called all kinds of names. Rolls Royce is everywhere down there. I, I would say yeah, Florida, Florida is very interesting. And it's rep. They're entrepreneurs and corporate heads. They're both. Money Mike, I agree. My office is a seven minute drive from my home. I walk, bike, or drive. Charles Hellas, my phone. The inventories are getting smaller as people in the stores. I've noticed since the immigration reform that retail business is way down. Jackie Gardner, you got to go out there and find one in your area. You got to develop relationships. You got to um, go ahead and start building a rep for yourself. Yep, I have Roadmaster. That's one of the reasons that my recovery is going better. That's crazy.
Jackie Garden, it ain't easy. You see, what you got to do is go out and build these relationships with people who will look at the deal versus looking at you. What's up, Lamote? Josh Barr, how would you describe the balance between budgeting versus being cheap? You budget with specific purposes. Like uh, one of the things I've seen with the pathologically, pathologically cheap, that if you talk about getting a luxury car, they will piss and be bone and talk about what a waste of money. What you, why are you doing that versus looking at like, you know, I drive two luxury cars. my neighbors they have two mercedes they have a mercedes suv and the Merce i mean part of what i have seen living in this neighborhood is that money moves they spend money they invest money they make money saving money which is a good thing it's a part of money management um Because this is the first step. You got to manage your money well. And this is why I have this course. Go ahead, get it. Money management is basic to finance and wealth development. Because once again, before you start a business or before you start investing, you should become a good manager of your money. Because once you start becoming a producer, once you start becoming an investor, you're going to make new money. And if your money is money management skills are bad, what's going to happen is that new money is going to get jacked up. Just like these young guys, they come out of college and they go into the NFL and they go to the NBA. You've got essentially someone who's a, who was broke kid. Like here's 10 million. Here's 15. Here's 20 million. They don't have anybody that they can talk to in their family about how to handle this money. So mistakes will be made. If you know, if I could talk to these guys, I would say number one, what you should do is live on half of your net income. You know, if I was able to grab some NFL NBA players. I don't care how big your first contract is. What you're going to do is you're going to sell up a budget and I don't care. And this other money is going to go into investments, uh, preferably because these NBA players, you know, they want to do, they want to do a nightclub or some. No, you got enough money to go ahead and get yourself 10, 15 houses, cash money and get you some residual income coming in. So that's where I would point them, but go ahead and get that course. The links below. Uh, nope, I don't have any uh, videos on wholesale. I don't do Shopify. What's up, Mr. Shelley? Levon Lee, always good info, Dr. G. People are afraid to converse with different people in person. I I, I, I know that, man. I don't understand that. Because your, your net worth could be your network. Same thing happens when I bought the motorcycle and the truck. Folks losing it. I got, I go, I still say if it paid off Fiesta, but it's like, why do you need more than one vehicle? It's a huge difference in cheap versus a budget. Yeah, because, you know, a budget, you have a reason. Like a lot of these people who are, who are spending millions of dollars on Facebook ads, they have a budget. They have a purpose while they're spending that money. Loom Ponics. Ask rep, if you can't manage a small amount of money, you can't manage a large amount. Hard lesson to learn. Facts, as they say on the internet. Facts. What's up, Life Media Pro Zola? Because the, the whole thing is, it starts with money management, not being pathologically cheap. 
Path logically cheap is like this Yeti cup, right? I think it cost me 25 bucks. A pathologically cheap person would not spend 25 bucks for this cup. They would go, well, in their mind, they have price points for certain things. They're like, oh, I'm gonna get me a cup, I'm gonna pay a dollar or two. That's it. They have these enforced price points that are based upon their own ideology, their own mindset and perspective, not based upon, wow, man, these things could change your life. They keep stuff cold all day. Once again, the abundant mindset. Yes, this cup cost me 25 bucks, but it is a very small percentage of what I bring in per month. See, what I look at is instead of cramming your wants to fit your budget, increasing budget to fit your wants. And that's what a lot of these kids here on the internet are doing. You got 21 year old kid who's figured out a way to start an online business and buy a Lambo. You know, I, I'm not hating on these kids. I'm relating. I'm like, okay, how did this kid do this? Because one of the things that gets me with new tech and new technology, they're not old enough to have years and years of experience. Some of these kids are 20, 22, 23, 24. They got started 19. Eighty-nine, Doctor Funk. I listen to Grant Cardone. He's as he remained broke, broke, so he doesn't get in the habit of hoarding money. So he buys sets, sets that generate monthly income. I remember seeing that video. You like? I spend it all. Grant has a plane. He ain't. He, Grant Cardone is not pathologically cheap. He will spend all of his money on assets that produce a return. Grant Cardone isn't pathologically cheap. Dan Locke isn't pathologically cheap. Being pathologically cheap will lock you into a low income lifestyle. Because this is one of the problems that I have with the fire movement. Let's say you retire at 35. You've got your um, million dollar portfolio. You can only pull off 3%. You 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 lock yourself into a low income cycle where you can't really do nothing extravagant without busting your budget. Who wants to live like that? Pathologically cheap people. Be real, yeah. YouTube's YouTube's a hater. Because the thing is, if you want to make money. You must have a money mindset. And like I have a bunch of friends on Facebook who are a part of, you know, they're Amazon FBA sellers. There are uh, many of them are Dave Ramsey advocate and they're pathologically cheap. They buy in bulk. They don't use credit cards. Like I actually, there was one person I, I actually said, you losing money. They were buying all the avatar, the Amazon uh, Amazon FBA inventory on a debit card and spending about three to four million a year. And I was like, you know how many trips that is? If you get yourself an American Express or a rewards card, the other people start jumping in and like, yeah, you know, and this person who did not have credit, he had to start off with a secure credit card to build up his credit profile. So it is crazy. Brian Hendricks, what's the best to develop a high income? Start a business. Because once you develop the money mindset, new doors open. Because see, mentally, when you're pathologically cheap, you mentally lock down. Well, I, I can't spend money on that. That's too much. Oh, we can't do that. We can't afford it. Uh, I see a lot of these people living the van life. They talk about money. Uh, and this is something else that I've noticed about, you know, because I've been watching a lot of these tiny houses. The people who live in the nicer vans or I'm watching this thing about boating 
and this couple from Australia, they've got this beautiful boat. It ain't small. And I start looking up how much a boat like that would cost. That boat's half a million dollars for a boat like that. And the, the, the people who have spent the money on the boats and the nicer vans and the nicer RVs have the biggest channel. You want to? You don't want to know why? Nobody wants to see somebody broken, barely making it. No one wants to see you know like you struggling to buy gas. No one wants to see that. that that's too close to home. It's like I can. I want to see that. I could just look in my own backyard. People, because you know I've been looking at a lot of stuff. Starting a business, serving your fellow man. There, there's so many ways to make money. What I see is the biggest problem is people are scared of making a mistake. So they don't do anything. They, they, they're they in this holding pattern. They're watching my videos, watching other videos, getting that knowledge. But they never take action. Junior Keller doors are open for the ones that keep knocking no matter how many turndowns they face. I rock with business lines and personal lines of credit. Once again, I don't think there's anything wrong with using debt to propel a business. Oh, man, you watch them. You love the channel of the cup. Yeah. Well, they have very high production value. Roadmaster, learn to say, how can I afford it? Not, I can't afford it. Excellent. I like that. I like that. Yeah, Christian, uh, I watched that channel because uh, she she does the editing and she does a fantastic job. And you know what? Uh, you know, I'm going to share something with y'all. Let's see. Um, YouTube. Where is it? Here it is. All right. This this boat is a half a million dollar boat. They're from Australia. They do all this stuff. They started this about five years ago. Notice that they got room to roam on this boat. I mean, I, I, it is shocking how roomy this boat is. Now, I'm about to show you something. Let's see. Go back to Patreon. All right. So at a minimum, at a minimum, they're making $10,000 a month from their Patreons. Plus, they ain't no telling how much money they're making from YouTube. They, they they spent money and they making money because um you know it opens up because you know if you're from Australia with an accent and you hit YouTube uh, there's another one which is just crazy to me but they probably making twenty five thousand dollars a month sailing around the world because they have high production value and they made the investment because you gotta understand they got money twenty five thousand dollars a month plus they have health insurance and you know it's very interesting because watching these folks 
they, they have a money mindset because I, I haven't got to how they got this boat yet because uh, actually he broke his neck twice. But once again, and here's another one. This dude was an electrician. And he quit and all he does, I mean, he, he's just, he's an Australian redneck. He hops around and does stuff. He's very entertaining. But look, look at the subscribers. Look at the views. You know. There, there's so many ways to make money, man. There's so many ways to make money. Jackie Gardner, you need to get busy. You need to start doing some. Yep, video quality is amazing, Christian. Rolo Beats finally broke myself looking at Friday as payday and just a regular day, just more traffic. Once you become a producer, every day can become payday. This is one of the things that really holds a lot of people back is a payday mentality. And I had this for the longest because I was probably my third year of the storage business. And I was like, you know, I think we had made $30,000, $40,000 that month. And I was breaking it down per hour, even though I worked more than 160 hours. And I was like, one day I was like, why are you doing this? This is insane. That paycheck mentality, that pathologically frugal mindset. Jackie Garden, I'm not giving you any money because uh, let me tell you why. You have not got started on anything. People who will throw money at you, will, you must be on the battlefield doing battle. You must be getting some results. No one's just going to give you money from start when you don't even know what you want to do. I don't invest in people who, who have wild-ass schemes, wazzes. Like, I want to do this. Uh, one of the reasons... I don't talk to a lot of people. A lot of people just want to talk to me and float their fantasy by. Uh, actually, I had a consult the other day where a guy had done amazing things and it was really juicy and meaty and I could help him. But if you're not out there actively doing anything, it's hard to help those people who are looking for permission to be successful. They're looking for someone to say, yeah, man, go and do that. Money Mike, I was one of those people that purchased inventory with my debit card. But as soon as I got my business credit card, my business gross income increased 150. Thanks to my wife in 30 days to 2,500. Yeah, I, I am surprised at these pathologically cheap people who are Amazon FBA sellers who don't use a credit card. If you spending, I know the year that I spent like a million dollars on paid traffic, I got, I didn't actually buy a plane ticket for about two and a half, three years. I use points to go everywhere, including London. That's a tangible benefit. That's a lot of money. If, uh, I mean, for something you were going to do anyway. And I, I just pathologically cheap. You can't talk to them. They just like, you know, I'm like, I'm like a Dave Ramsey convert. I'm not going to carry any credit card debt. And I see them. I'm just like, you stupid. You scared and stupid. Glendon, there are so many ways to earn money. They do some, do you sometimes wish you were 20 years younger? It's only get better with more opportunities coming soon. I actually got on this path at the age of 32. So I don't have the, I wish I had started younger. Um, Now, I don't wish I was 20 years old. Uh, I really don't want to go back to that. But as you said, there's so many ways to make money. Engineer. Yes, Uncle G, only work bees keep track of what day it is. 
every day is Friday as a producer. Every day I make money. I have an income stream coming in seven days a week. Be it this YouTube channel, course sales, every day I make money. And that's one of that was one of my written goals. I wanted to make money seven days a week. I didn't want to just wait on Friday. Um, I've not received, quote, a paycheck in well over, good Lord, it's been almost two decades. Brian Hendricks, being, being young myself, do you think? Yes, experimentation is key. The more things you try, the more things that you get exposed to, the greater your chances of success. If you're debt free, you don't need Dave Ramsey. Juju Red watching from Nairobi, Kenya. Awesome, man. Uh, S Rep. That's helpful, mastering SEO. That's very helpful. Paid traffic, uh, partnerships, collaboration. There, there's a lot of ways to get traffic. Eighty-nine, Doctor Funk. Sometimes going through the struggle is what makes you stronger. No need to look in the past. Yeah, because one of the things is, I like to. I don't have a lot of regrets. I have some regrets, but I don't have a lot. And that's something I'm proud of, because I went ahead and I went after what I wanted. Because you know, living in the past, and this is a you know uh, the pathologically hotep. They live in the past and they can't move forward in the future. Facts, creating income where it's never existed, exhilarating. Mel Brown, I've made several million. Now here's a question for you, I want you to answer. How does knowing what I make help you? How does that help you? How does that put money in your pocket? Please answer that question. I've been down that road several times, bro. I'm living in the million dollar neighborhood, driving luxury cars. I've been living like this for a long time. But once again, how does that help you make money knowing what my net worth is? Because that's one of the things, because I call that just, uh, you know, curious people who are not working on their own dreams and ambitions. Gladiator, are you not entertained? People have not changed much since then. What's up, Maurice Blake? Groove Dodger, I retired early, but I'm not wealthy. Own my home, cars, got no credit, but got a business idea. You should have produced more income because one of the things that you have experienced is there's things you wanted to do, but you couldn't do it because you didn't have the income. What kind of retirement is that? Like, you know, yeah, I got all the stuff paid off. I got my house paid off. I got my cars paid off but I can't make moves like I want to make moves. Godfrey Johnson depends on the person, not the age. Mel Brown, once again, how does that help you? Don't start arguing with me. Answer the question. Simple Ken, the permission to be successful statement is a gym. When you did 2,500 last year, What do you think about Tesla Electric? It's an amazing company. Do to create a new American car company. Patrick Cato, do it. I don't offer any courses on real estate. No. Mel Brown, I'm waiting on your answer because I know you're here. How does that help you? This is a challenge because it's one thing to watch someone make moves and be inspired. That's cool. But I know there's some folks who, you know, like, matter of fact, let me, let me do this. Hold on a second. 
let me close that. This is the neighborhood that I live in. And part of one of the things that happened to me by living in this neighborhood is I stopped being in awe. It became pedestrian to see mansions. It became pedestrian to see Lambos and Ferraris. It became pedestrian to see rich people and mentally I begin to think I can do it too. That was one of the greatest benefits of living over here. It's like, well, they figured out how to do this. I, I could do this too. Cause uh, I've checked a lot of the property records. A lot of these houses have the original inhabitant, in it, which means there's no mortgage on these properties. The originals still live there. The folks who are, they've just passed the house on, a lot of these houses are in trust, they're in LLCs. But this is where I live, and I've been living here for a minute. One of the reasons that got me here, because I remember there was this chick I was dating, and we were driving through another aspect of this neighborhood, and I said, I'm going to live here. I told myself I was going to live here many, many years ago, and I made it happen. So let me go ahead and see. Did he answer my question? Rags, richest stories are ins inspirational. Just knowing you were once homeless and now have made millions. It should be, but see, some people are not looking at that process. JL Vids pocket watching is whack. The guy on the internet, no, I will not own a boarding house. Uh, one, they're illegal to own. Essentially, you can have a house, but you can't have locks on the doors and stuff. I, I would not get into that. I will stick with single family residential. That's the first leg of what I'm going to invest in. But yeah, boarding houses can be extremely profitable. Extremely. Um, because the thing is property in the hood is cheap. So you go in there because I mean, seriously, there were people who were getting houses for 15, 20,000, getting a few tenants and within mere months, this house has paid for itself. I mean, like this one boarding house, the dude told me, he's like, he paid 25000 for it. He owned it for three years. Uh, the house was getting $2,800 off rent. The technology, I was working 60 plus hours a week for a while and saved up money and be good for 18 months. I'm going to downgrade to part-time while still saving, living with roommates so I can focus on hustling. That's it. That's saving with a plan. That's the saving with intention. You ain't just being cheap to be cheap, you know, because like I, I have seen some of these van life people, there's like two classifications of them. Uh, the ones who are like living that way because they can't make any money. You can see it in the, the videos and you can see it in how they live and you can see it in their mindset. Whereas, like I'm looking at the young bloods and the selling vagabonds. They, they're coming from a different position of being financially free. Sam Pac Kevin, knowing how much people make is in the material unless you're only using it as a landmark to surpass. I'm going to live here. I'm going to make more than this. And age isn't isn't an ultimate determinant. Nope. Uh, typically, smart people who have made consistent good decisions, that's when age does come into play. Like you've lived longer, you've made, you've had more time to accumulate wealth. Because I can tell you, just when I go for my morning walk, I see nothing but older people. I don't see any young people unless they're the child of a couple. I'll see a teenager running around here because uh, there's a high school 
and sometimes the track team will run up here. Those are the young people I see. They're, they're kids. I don't see 25-year-olds and 30-year-olds. No. Mel Brown, you haven't been timed out by me, and you still haven't answered the question. Answer the question. How does knowing that information help you make money? Stop dodging, or you will be timed out. God is no. The new term for boarding houses is house hack and essentially still rent that rooms. Okay. As for up the Joseph Murray book you mentioned, they're helping me change the mindset about the bondage. Awesome. Because the thing is, the, the pathologically cheap people that I see on Facebook, none of them are wealthy. That should be an indicator that this is not going to get you where you want to be. Uh, I hear them like, um, I'm going to pay my house off, you know, in the position to pay my house off. Uh, and also a lot of them who are longtime Amazon FBA sellers, it's gotten hard to make money on Amazon. Uh, Mel Brown, I would disagree with that. You need to expand your network of people you associate with. I am not a unicorn. And also, I don't compete in the black community. I compete in, I compete in the community at large. You know, I compete against white dudes. That's the warrior mindset. That's the abundance mindset because essentially, you know, how do you increase your basketball game? By playing people who are better than you. Uh, Robert L. Smith, billionaire. He made he's rich without entertaining people. Um, I think there will be many more of me coming in the future because this young group of folks now who are very inquisitive, who are very much go-getters, very much doers. There are black folks over here. Theo Ratcliffe. Um, God. Waka Flocka lives in my neighborhood. There are plenty of black folks over here. I'm not the only one. Let the limited mindset stuff go. Uh, right on Long Island, which is full of mansions, there's like four little sets of black kids waiting for the school bus. They're, we out here, man. We out here. There's a lot of black folks who do not subscribe to, I must live in the, I must live in the black neighborhood. See, they're like, I'm going to live in the best neighborhood I can. That's what they're doing. Hey, now, Dr. Funk, something I want to share with you guys, download the next door app. If you observe the app, you can start a service-based business. Absolutely. Children are the number one reason for poverty. Uh, I only read the power of his sub subconscious. Why, Mel Brown? Why can't we have a community of people that can live the American dream? Uh, that's happening, dude. You got a lot of the black folks who are getting in tech. You have black programmers. Uh, typically, these folks are not appreciated by the black community at large, so they keep a low profile. Like Robert Smith became a billionaire and nobody even noticed. They weren't checking for him. Like, you know, uh, Robert Smith has more money than Jay-Z, but when Jay-Z was announced to be the first hip-hop billionaire, I, I can't tell you how many pages I saw that crap on. I don't, to me, Jay-Z started off as a drug dealer. And he took that drug money and got in the rap and created his own label. Not the best business model, in my opinion. Because uh, the American dream has changed, dude. Yeah, um, next door, once again, if you want to sit on Craigslist, you can make money. If you want to sit on next door, you can make money. If you want to sit on Facebook Marketplace, you can make money. 
you can buy stuff off the marketplace, put up a better presentation, uh, copywriting and writing ads is a skill set, and you can sell it. Like, um, there was the story of this guy who bought all this stuff off eBay, and he hired writers to write up these wonderful descriptions. And let's see. Let's see. Uh, bought on eBay and resold it after hiring writers. I can't find this, but it was a good story of people who this guy, he hired a bunch of writers. He bought a bunch of things on eBay. And he had these people write these nice descriptions and he quadrupled his money. Mel Brown, we don't have those kind of conversations because essentially Right now, in 1970s, it became very possible for black people to compete. And each year, we get more and more black people competing. The tech knowledge is I'm a software developer, and people have no clue. Yeah, because essentially, there's a lot of people who don't know what certain jobs produce, like a full stack developer. That's a 200K a year job. Yep. Uh, Mel Brown, I'm now on this community tip. First of all, it is incumbent upon the individual to make the moves. Community. And I'm going to tell you, this was, you know, when I was in the West End and I did a little work for Urban Takeover, I was thinking if we as a community came together, put our money together and bought these older homes and fixed them up, the old people live in there. Nobody thinking like that. Nobody's like, well, who, who's going to money we going to spend? There ain't no community, man. Let this community stuff go. Uh, Mel Brown, I'm going to tell you from experience, as someone who has sold a lot of products to white people, if you put it out, you good enough, you will make money. Let this old stuff go. All right. I don't know why you're watching this channel, Mel. This channel ain't for you. I'm sitting on 10K. How should I invest it? You leave your 10K in the bank and you should start a business to get you some cash flow. Yep, I'm an individual. It is the it is incumbent upon the individual to live their best life. And when you have a bunch of individuals who are living their best life, going out, making money, representing the group well, the whole group benefits. But this whole notion of community, you know, people have been waiting on community to come together for 300 years. It still ain't happened. So for you hoteps in the comments, y'all don't need to watch this channel. We're about rough, rugged individualism. As someone who has competed in the business sense with white men and won, I am not going to sing or take part of your woe. 
we black, we can achieve. I'm a self-published author. I'm a prolific YouTuber. I have my own online education systems. Once again, there is no one at the door saying you can't do these things. The only thing that's holding you back is you. That's what's holding you back. You holding yourself back with these limited beliefs, which goes to pathological frugality. Once again, you can't see as your beliefs. All right. J. Elvis, best way to learn poverty is not to be in it. Blue sudden, the only color that matters is green. Right, right, right. Pretty much, Louis, when money goes from a white person to an African American or Hispanic, money is still green. Because, see, I've been getting white people money, Asian people money, Jewish money for, for decades. See, th this is one of the things I have with people who want to have these philosophical arguments while I quote the black community. Some of the black community is behind. There is a emerging new progressive black uh, community that's coming out that is realizing that we cannot hang out with the old black community. You know, I'm not going to get into the social commentary, but there is a reason that young children of well-off to rich black parents often end up in poverty into adulthood. And it's part of kind of keep hood culture or what I call damaging black culture alive and well. Because this is the thing. Uh, you guys go in business, go in business as men and women, not black men and black women. Because you're going to carry a whole bunch of baggage into a situation that shouldn't even be there. If you good enough, no one cares if you black. Look at Lil Nas, an old country road. He is pimping that song for all it's worth. He is killing it because he was good enough. And you see all these on TikTok, you see all these memes and stuff by who white kids. And they know he black and he produced this song. They don't care because he was good enough. GV, the only thing that matters now is numbers. Yep. Pretty much, man. I mean, essentially, because he never really answered my question, like having that information, how to help him make money. And one of the things, you know, if you, you're watching his channel, you should understand we're about making money. We're about improving our lives. We're about living that best life. And Going ahead and because once again, I don't compare myself to other black people. I compare myself to other successful men, regardless of race, because that's a limiting belief. Because when you get in, because I mean, this is who you're going to have to compete with in this world. You're going to have to compete with the white people, the Asian people. Asian supremacy is a real thing. Asians are taking over Africa. So, you know, while people on white supremacy, uh, white men are committing suicide in record numbers. White men are becoming addicted. And by the year 2045, they will not be the majority. They hustling backwards. But people still on that, beating that drum. Boom. White supremacy. Boom. White supremacy. I can't do that because of white supremacy. That's your limiting belief. Point of view, just hired my first staff. She's Hispanic. All right, all right. Congratulations. So essentially, you know, being pathologically cheap is just not the way to get wealthy. It's a limiting belief. Because, like I said, I got a bunch of Facebook friends I could point out. Based on their comments over the years, you know, uh, I'm gonna get my house paid off. 
I'm going to do this. And, you know, it's a $250,000 house. If he had really leaned on his Amazon business instead of being pathologically cheap, because pathologically cheap creeps up in every area of your life. You just don't um, just leave it with money. This creeps into your personal relationships. This creeps into your feelings. God is no, you, you ain't watching international news. A lot of Americans don't watch international news. I listen to the BBC. I watch, uh, RT rush the Russian channel. Yeah. Cause see Africa is going to be an extension of Asia. Watch mark my words in 50 years. Cause Asia is going over there. They're doing massive development, China. They're building roads, they're building facilities, they're building infrastructure, which they own in a foreign country because these people don't have enough economic capital to do it themselves. And the richest, on the, on the most mineral rich continent in the world. So th this is what's going on. So don't be pathologically cheap. Go ahead. Whoever controls Africa, the world uh, owns the world because of the natural resources. And you notice how when they separate the Middle East from Africa, those are brown people. It's very interesting. Jason Ham, so if I have 50000 in personal money, what's your advice? Use the money to invest in real estate versus applying for a loan. Uh, once again, I, I would need to know more because if you got $50,000, I'll tell anyone this. Put your money in the bank and start a service business to get more money. Louis the seller, it's not race that entice me about from person first. It's the product, then it's the perception of the seller. Does she have integrity? Akon is funded by the Chinese. I didn't know that's where he got that billion from. Yep. Godfrey, China's in Zimbabwe right now trying to take over their gold mines. I mean, you're, you know, because we as Americans, we tend to be very introspective and we like to examine our own navels and we don't really look at the rest of the world. There are massive things going on in the rest of the world in terms of Africa. Uh, China is China, Asia, China and Japan's got like China, you know, dating. There are more Chinese men than there are Chinese women. So this is reflected into a serious competition to get a wife. If you don't have a condo and a good job, you don't have a wife. They can't compete. And a lot of these Asian dudes are going to Africa to get them some African honey because they can't get them a Chinese honey. Uh, you know, that's going to be an interesting thing because China ain't playing. China's not playing. China is serious. And it's up to Chinese and feel the groups because this is worldwide competition. Absolutely. That's why I was really pleased when I introduced my digital products. I was selling internationally. I was selling to people in Israel. I was just like, how do you come up into this? They give them rules. They steal the land. The colonial playbook. Absolutely. Been the bartender. Ordinary Chinese men have been kicked to the curb. They've been forced to rent girlfriends just for companionship, because China had this uh, one-child policy forever, and a lot of baby, a lot of female babies were aborted due to this policy. So now the imbalance is there's not enough asian women chinese women for chinese men 
I think the ratio, I think it's like five to one. There's five Chinese men for every one Asian woman. And you know, the Asian women are clowning. I know something about that. When I was in Hawaii, you know, uh, essentially the number of black men per black woman was 50 to one. 50 to one. You saw fat chicks pushing Porsches. If you want to have you some brown sugar. That's what you you had to go through the gauntlet. So you you have all of these things that are going on, but you can't save your way to wealth. The mental shift is required. You you got to get on that producer quandra. You got to start you know what can I produce that the world doesn't have? What part of me can produce something that the world wants? It can be cupcakes. It can be cookies. It can be paper dolls. It, it could be coloring books. For a long time, coloring books were a hot, 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 hot item. Um, Amazon FBA. You know, once again, you got to get into it. Uh, Trump, no, Trump's just a dummy. 5-1, rough odds in the dating game. Like as Ben said, many Chinese men are renting companionship. They're renting companionship because that's what's going on. All right. So I think, you know, you guys have got it. So that's it for the day. I will see you guys later. Understand that you can't save your way to being wealthy. And manage your money, allocating funds in the proper manner is the first step. Many people get that first step and they stay there. They don't escalate. And they don't, because a lot of Amazon sellers I know, they stuck. They're not increasing their businesses. They're not making more money because they just got stuck. And that pathological frugality is the, one of the reasons because when you stand with your money, you stand you with your mind. So with that, I'll see you guys later.